What's going on guys and welcome back to another reaction video today We're gonna to be checking out Joshi's video again because you keep asking So I produce so much nuclear waste the world is ruined forever So go over to his channel go show let's give him out some love subscribe to him like do whatever he can because the guy's insane and he's a fantastic content creator and you cannot question it he's a madman he's nuts and you guys know i've said that multiple times and you want me to react to more so we're doing it and i'm worried because it's nuclear waste and nuclear waste is pretty bad in your factory so you've got to send it far away that's what i would do it's what some of you would do josh huh. i don't know We'll find out. So without further ado, let's go into this and see where the chaos goes. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Hi, Josh. Oh How you doing? God, it's time you doing? for more Satisfactory. Oh, how oh I missed you, Factory, with oh no rules, limits, or logic. Satisfactory is a game about making efficient machines. Efficient machines. Efficient. Does it matter if it's going to look clean or anything? No matter your play style, you can make it efficient. You could build without foundations and still make it efficient. The game allows you to do that. It's beautiful. But I like to build it nice and clean on foundations and make the factory look pretty. Or in my case, just find new and inventive ways to torture the game. First, mm -hmm. we built a factory that was actually kind of normal. Until I realized you the could early make it look beginnings. like this. And then I made it look like this. And I realized the frame rate gets this worse. This is where I discovered the chaos. And we tested those limits by building a tornado out of conveyor belts. And it's actually kind of pretty. Just don't look directly at it, unless you like slideshows. Then mm -hmm. I saw this empty valley and I thought, you know what this could use? A conveyor belt weave. Not to be outbeaten, we went back over to belt nato here and turned it into a full-fledged cocoon after that we moved on it's to other crazy just to think how to belt nato here and perfect that is as a corn you know i know it's not kind of intentional but kind of just knowing where you're placing the 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 um walkways around like it would have placed it on the outer edge for it to go out that way and doing doing so would have like created this corn but it's just it's crazy, the shape of it. Turned it into a full-fledged cocoon. After that, we moved on to other interests, like messing with these trucks here, only to realize that if you throw them all in a pit like this, they become sentient and try to escape. And I thought we might be done. And then those crazy developers just kept updating the game, so I kept trying Little out monorails. their stuff. Like this beautiful train station that you can even custom name. With the Sour Patch... Is it the Sour Patch Kids? Does the candy... American candy thing. Some of you were commenting on it, yeah, so like it's ripped some of your teeth out before, you know? And boy, did I custom name it. That's when I realized we could send them through the earth and straight to hell. And then at the tail end of the last episode, we realized one last thing left to do. I was Nuclear worried when power. I saw this. Oh, and also, today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. But I'll Nord talk about VPN. that a little bit later in the video. Oh, and before we head to our first destination, check this out. The game actually runs better now, and this blows my mind. My god, the performance <sighs> increase is amazing. This thing doesn't destroy my computer anymore. Like, like, I can run up to it. I can bask in its majesty. It is a brave new world. So what are we going to do today? Play around with nuclear power, of course. Go get that uranium. The That's what. Episode. And our first step to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and <laughs> shove it into this thing. Last mm -hmm. episode. Oh, we... just realized as well, because this was way back then and water extractors were not a thing. These don't require water yet. So this is still before the water patch. Before, um... 3.0 to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and sh I said 3.0 patch 3 I don't mean 3.0 Patch three, update three. Shove it into this thing. Last episode, we used our little locator guide here to find uranium, which was a little ways away. But the bigger hurdle is this stuff will kill you if you get too close to it. And that's why we brought this Time to head thing. into them caves, Josh. Suit. Strap it on, makes you look super cool. Now we're ready to go face the elements. You know what? Let's do it with style in our beautiful Go and find them bloody car. waterfalls. Now, I feel like I took a wrong turn somewhere, but I'm going to have faith that this is the right way. Well, everything's green. I feel like that's sort of a good sign. I think we're going to the right place. Mm -hmm. Yep, we definitely are. I see little bits of ore here. Oh, hello, cat friends. These oh, are supposed God. to be spiders in the game. He's got the arachnophobia mod on, and these... The, cause I do it just for... Especially the, my community, because some of them, you know, hate spiders. So I put the cat thing on, and the, the, the spiders don't bother me, but the cats do. Because when you turn around and you see two big fucking eyes staring at you, it's kind of terrifying, especially now that they leap at you. You know? And it just... They just drop... Yeah, it's nuts. Game, but for everybody's benefit, I turned on the arachnophobia mode, which turns them into these creepy cat heads, yep. which I think we can all agree is a little worse than just spiders. Anyway, we'll just take care of them in short order. No big deal. Oh, you want some too, <laughs> do you? Let's get this nightmare over with. Okay, we're... See, that's the thing. 
with today's update, that spider that was on there would have leapt in the air and landed on him because they've got horrible sounds as well. Horrible sounds. Was I putting down our beautiful mining drill? That's what. Never has anything in a cave looked so majestic. So right now this thing doesn't have any power, which honestly is for the better. Because if this thing is pulling out uranium while we have it set up, we're just going to be taking on lots of radiation. Oh, did I mention to find this? I had to go through a waterfall. It's true. I wandered around for like an hour yep. before I figured out it's back here. Okay. Finally ran the conveyor belt all the way home. We're going to stage our uranium over here. You may recognize this little place over here. In a previous the video, cars, this is yeah. where. I had all of my trucks, you know, the ones that turned into a sentient species, and then I had to put them down, otherwise the game would never run again. So we're gonna stage everything here because we can't just send the uranium over raw. We gotta make two things first. Just notice he's building on foundations. Is this the change? Is he becoming a better man? First, uranium cells and electromagnetic control rods. Uranium cells are the uranium itself, as well as concrete, and the electromagnetic rods are stators. Oh my god, look at the AI limiters inside of them. And AI limiters. He's They've got a totally different skin now. Easy enough, let's make a couple assemblers. We'll just place one here, and also just kind of over there. We're also going to send our uranium into this guy over okay, here. Okay, you're building on way, foundations. The power to That's that a plus yet, for so me, Josh. Now. Okay, here we go. So now that we've connected the power, all we have to do is wait for... Them power poles was so bad for performance, hence the reason they've changed them. They were so bad. Like, if the, the, if you put so many down in a certain area, it would just, it would just explode your PC for the drill to do its thing and bring the uranium to us. While we wait, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, and that would be NordVPN. Nord I don't get a chance to talk about this very much in my videos, but I actually take online privacy extremely seriously. And as part of my arsenal of things I do to stay safe online, it's I've true. always used a VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Think of it as like a hazmat suit for your data. <laughs> and in this case, that hazmat suit allows you to stay anonymous online, encrypts your data, and keeps your location private. He has a good Nord point. VPN also has, at the time of this video, over 5,000 servers located across 59 countries, and they're adding more servers all the time. They also have Android and iOS apps, so you can use it on your mobile devices as well. So if you want to join me in protecting yourselves online, head on over to nordvpn.com slash game it out, or use the link in the description. And you does that still work? Does the link still work? Does the link still work? It does! So if you want to go and support him, go over here. And get four months free. You can get 70% off a three-year plan. And if you use Game It Out at checkout, not only does it help them know I sent you there, you'll also get an additional month free. So again, that's four months free. <laughs> it's NordVPN.com slash Game It Out. And don't forget to use Game It Out at checkout to get that extra free month. NordVPN, thanks again for sponsoring me. And there it is. For the record, it took about four minutes. And it still hurts to get in here, right? Oh boy, does it ever. It's mm -hmm. kind of a shame. It's so pretty to look at. It's like a bunch of Slimers just it, on a conveyor. But it is like uranium waste, nuclear waste, all that kind of stuff looks really nice when everything's moving because it, it you can ju it just like illuminescence and you can just see all the yellow lines moving and when everything's nice and neat, it looks Belt. So this guy over here is going to be for our uranium cells. The uranium we obviously have. And right in front of us at the center of our base is some concrete. Okay, and there's the concrete. As I slowly died of radiation poisoning. Now this thing's doing the magic of making uranium cells. And for our control rods, gotta grab them stators and AI limiters. Alright, AI limiters for days. And the, the AI limiters look like power shards. I wonder if they use the same skin. I've never thought about that before, you know? Because the power shards are kind of like near enough the same, just orange, and they have the little crystal inside of them. These are the stators. Oh, very Thankfully, similar. I have pretty much all of these materials being built somewhere in my base, and I just need to find them and route them over here. Now that those two things are underway, we have to turn to our old friend, the manufacturer, <laughs> which we're going to build down here the for kind of no reason. And in this thing, we're going to build nuclear fuel rods, which is what can finally go inside the nuclear reactors. My favorite part about this? Very radioactive. That's what I like to hear. First, we'll send these uranium cells down there. Okay, that's one down and two down. So that connects our two nuclear things. To finish off the trifecta we just need to get ourselves some of okay, these encased beams. industrial beams which i just happen to know where there's a lot of them it's like all the stuff i built previously was all building up to this also known as thank god my production is so imbalanced i just have extra random crap everywhere see if we can't work quickly here i seem to be taking on a not insignificant amount of radiation poisoning and there we Wait, go and we'll just send these had beauties on? right he over doesn't. there and since i've already got my medical inhaler out this calls for a celebration puff <sighs> 
Uh, <laughs> now that I've taken on 10 <laughs> generations worth of radiation sickness, I'm just going to stare off into space for a bit and let my empire just grow. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape now. So many beautiful fuel rods. Now comes the fun part, where I route fuel rods all over the map and wonder if I'm going to melt my face off. Almost there. Ah, finally, after all that, the fuel rods are in the thingamajig. The machine looks to be working, and boy, is it a thing of beauty. Now the only thing left to do is hook it up to power. Now I'd uh, run. that'd be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke is. My god, look at that jower. I thought that... And boy, Wait. is it a thing of beauty. Now the only thing left to do is hook it up to power. Okay, there I thought I saw something. I thought that'd weird. be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke is. My god, look at that jump. Our capacity for power was 4,400, and then we brought the power plant online, and now it's 6,900. That is quite the leap. So here's the other thing that happens with... One thing I'm worried about here is with how many nuclear plants he's going to put down. Because if he puts down, like, let's say, a 100, you know, that... that that when update three comes out is going to be a big job because he's going to he's going to have to put pipes with them and water extractors and it's that's just going to be a big job itself he'll have no power when he load his save up so he'll have to fix it he'll have to fix it nuclear power we get delicious beautiful waste extremely mm -hmm. radioactive and what are we going to do with that nuclear waste well build a bunch of conveyor belts that zigzags it through this oh, waterfall God. of course and i'm using the slow conveyor belts because i want all that radiation goodness to get all in the water supply and then once its slow journey is complete all that tasty waste goes into this bin that's for gonna future fill up generations quick. to worry about okay first nuclear power plant done and while i'm satisfied we could get that first one off the ground i feel like there's so much more we could be doing. Huh, this gives me an idea. I can't help but think being able to look at the cocoon again is a blessing in disguise. So for the first time in a long time, we're going back in. Oh no. Please don't put the nuclear waste in there. It's been so long since I was able to climb in this thing. Here we are in the belly of the beast. These, of course, being our three oil refineries. I'm tempted to go back and change all of these Mark 1 conveyor belts to Mark 5, but even I hurt imagining how long that would take. We're now here at the halfway point. You can tell because the iron rods stop and the oil begins. So I don't actually think there's an opening. I think I have to make one to get out. Nope, wait, found my opening. I'll just fly my way up there. <laughs> Hopefully I don't run out of fuel for Let's my jetpack. the butthole. It's a long way down. Ah, and here we are at the very top. I know I've said it a couple of times, but I cannot stress how bizarre it is to be able to look at this thing and the frame rate maintains. Look at the dumpster that is my factory set up. Just... <sighs> I honestly don't know what to say to that. You know, when it's down there, you can kind of see little bits by little bits, but when you're up here, you get... you, <sighs> Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I've like got no point, goddamn even, words. I can't tell what goes where. That. So I keep forgetting that there's like stairs hey, and walkways, and it would be really useful because we do need to find a way to get up there fast. But no one likes taking stairs, so I found a better way to get up there. It's called a bunch of bounce pads all over the place. Oh, God. Here, let me show you what I mean. It starts with this bounce pad right over here. So we just jump on this conveyor belt, which will launch us in at the right angle. It'll take us over to this bad boy. You want to know the crazy thing? Jump pads back then was very hard to try and kind of maintain. You had to trial and error. So you had to put one down, jump through it, find out where you land, and then build another pad there. Now you don't have to do that because they kind of have like a targeting system. When you put one down, it shows an arrow. So doing this back then would have took some time. This would have took a lot of time because he would have had to go into one jump pad, see where that takes him, then put another pad there, take, see that, where that takes that one, and then so on and so forth. And it'll just start bouncing us all the way up to the top. And the nice thing is it's all set up so I don't have to do anything. And I can just bask and look at our factories, really just enjoy the ride. Oh, oh sh**. <laughs> I'm not even moving anything. It's just bouncing me for me. So I can just look around at the nice surroundings, really take in all the beautiful scenery.
Are you fucking serious? Rip. <laughs> or I can just hold on for dear life and hope the whole thing works. Honestly, it works about 10% of the time. It's the best. But it gets you close to the top of the cocoon, so beggars can't be choosers. Oh, here we are coming in for a landing. Bounce off this backboard. Here comes the final bounce. I can't think of a better way to get <gasps> to the top of this spiral. Oh, I okay, thought so you were straight into yourself, the hole. The I mean, if you look out there, you can already see our nuclear power plant dumping nuclear waste down below. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, I know this seems God. like sacrilege, but we're going to cut the head off of the beast and i know it seems scary but i promise you there's a reason for everything He's remember the, the top, top of this thing because of the red tint looked kind of like a warhead well now we're really putting that nuclear touch on the top of it Yeah, okay, that's looking better. It's got that kind of gaudy Vegas quality to it. Also, why is my nuclear reactor already showing signs of wear and tear? I haven't even hooked it up yet. And of course, we want it to look classy, right? Like, look at all the crap already floating around this thing. That majestic crown up there deserves the finest curb appeal. It's gonna so be first, a radioactive. Let's make sure to loop this stuff through everything so Tornado. that everything is nicely irradiated. Okay, yeah, this'll do. B plus at best. So we're gonna take these fuel rods and we're gonna feed them in through the bottom of the cocoon. That way Way the entire thing can maintain its visual splendor. Okay, there we go. Everything is properly irradiated. I, I remember when we could just look down this and just see the outer shell. And now inside, it's just a massive, crazy, like... Have you ever played Kaplunk? Have you ever played Kaplunk? That's what this is starting to look like. I'm just like, I'm just gonna pull out the pins and everything's gonna fall down. That's what it's starting to look like. But now he's introduced the the rods in here and it's going to be highly dangerous so i hope he's got his hazmat suit on now all we need to do is connect it to the power grid thankfully because of the bounce pads floating in the air over here there's already a bunch of power lines just ready for me to connect to god look at that burst in power right there now we got to deal with my favorite thing nuclear waste the waste is all going to come out of right here and as is my custom we're only going to use the finest slowest belts we can now all we need to do is just run this belt full of byproduct goodness all the way down to the edge of these barrels and just just to make it a tad more oh, convenient, no. I'm gonna send the nuclear waste down in one of these splitters using the power of conveyor lift technology. Thank God these things can just keep going lower and lower and lower. Look at that, you can just have it hand delivered right to the ground. You know what I think I'm gonna do with all this nuclear stuff? He's gonna have so many problems with this later on. I don't think you realize the amount of problems he's gonna have. I don't even know if he thinks he knows how many problems he's gonna have. I'm just gonna add a merger to where these iron rods are coming out. And I'm just gonna mix these in with the iron rods. Oh yeah, I'm sure this won't be a problem at all. <laughs> well, there it goes. Join your friends. You know, though, with two power plants, I still feel like we're not producing enough nuclear waste. Uh-oh. Ah, much better. There's like 50 power plants back there. But this actually poses a new problem. While our power capacity is amazing, our consumption is, uh, conservative at best. And in order for these things to start chewing through those fuel rods, we actually have to get our power consumption up. Otherwise, they're just gonna sit here idly. Which is great if you're trying to build an efficient- Okay. The amount is not what's bothering me. The amount of power he's producing, not bothering me. That would only just power- part of one of my bases. What I'm worried about now is this nuclear waste. Because for those that don't know, nuclear waste cannot be deleted, it can't be recycled, and it can't be, uh, it can't be sunk in the resourcing. And the resourcing was not introduced yet anyway. So it's just going to sit there. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's opened his safe one day and gone, oh, sh shit. Like, he has to avoid all of this and the amount of, like, filters he has to use to stop bloody dying and how many, <laughs> many times he has to heal efficient factory it's not so great if you want your main export to be nuclear waste and god do we want more of these barrels and to do that we're going to turn to our old friend train technology and the reason for that is because trains generate electricity and i can set them to go forever so test one one station here and another station here let's put a train down and do a quick test as you can see firing this thing up it goes around and around and around generating not nearly as much as i would Wait a minute, is he going to fill a train with nuclear waste and just let it go around the map? Is that what he's about to do right now? So then the nuclear waste will move into different zones of the map? 
I would like, but hey, it's generating something. Something else interesting we can do is we can connect trains oh together. God. And while each train in and of itself doesn't take up more power to function like this, they all have to fire up their engines to move. That's a nice little power push for not doing a whole lot. And they'll know this power output matters. If I see barrels piling up here, I know it's working. Now I'm interested to see if we can generate some power faster. Test number two. In which case we see if adding some rails that go up increases how much power it takes. And then also I gave it a little more distance, mostly because I don't know how to use train you tracks need more power well. to Let's go conductor and see how it goes. So as always, when you first start it out, it does take a lot of power. Downhill does a little bit less for the power. Once the train gets moving, it takes up less because it's already got that speed going. So here's my current... Yeah. Fun facts with the uh, the locomotives. For every one locomotive, you need freight, uh, four freight cars to keep optimal speeds. And because he's running, what, maybe... Did he put 15 on there? Oh, boy. It means he can put 60 freight cars on there without losing, without losing power. But doing that, I think the limit of f freight cars to um, train cars, there's actually a limit. The game will actually crash. At least back then there was. Now it's all right. Like, you, you, I think you could only put down like a, a maybe a train of 68 to maybe 69 uh, locomotives down with freight cars, and it will crash the game running theory maximum trains combined with maximum train stations means tons of stopping and starting oh meaning God. tons of power generated you know i have an idea how we can test this but i gotta build something real fast so hang on it'll just take a second now what Okay, here's test number whatever this is. I sure hope it goes okay. It's essentially one gigantic loop that goes through all of these tracks. It's not particularly pretty or elegant. Hey, the whole point is just to generate electricity. Okay, now we've added the trains. In case you're curious, this is 188 trains. All connected. Um... Maybe... My number was 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 slightly off. <laughs> I think my number was slightly off. Oh my god. Maybe it's cuz he doesn't have the lock the uh, the freight on there. Maybe that's what it is. 188 locomotives. It's like a it's like he's playing snake. We've all played it right. On the Nokia 3310. Sitting there for hours, the undestructible phone. Oh um, way back in the day. Connected together, taking up the entire track start to finish. And it's all automated, so the trains will just loop through this disaster forever. There are 23 total stations they go through, aptly named Hulp, before Hulp. looping back around. <laughs> you know what pains me most about this? It's not that it's actually semi-orderly, although that also pains me. It's how freaking slow everything's going. I didn't realize that would be the thing that drives me nuts. But enough talk, how's it doing for our power? The game finally got to him. Something... That he can't control. Well, he can if he just removes some locomotives. Is what's breaking the man? Flipping locomotives! Power. At an idle state, about 6,000, not too bad. When the trains start up again, it hits a nice healthy 12,000. That's still a far cry from maxing out our potential with 100,000. But before I go nuts and start laying out more track, let's at least see if we're exporting any of the good stuff now. And by that, of course, I mean nuclear waste. Yeah, yeah, this'll do. This'll do nicely. That's a lot of barrels. I think this is oh, working no. out quite well. So normally the goal would be to try to figure out where to put this stuff so it doesn't do any harm. But why would you want to hide something so majestic? Now me, I look at my base and I- because it's death. Do you mean it's death? <laughs> Josh, god damn it, man. Can someone let me know in the comments um, if Josh ever had the regrets of that, maybe in one of his live streams or, or something, where he actually questioned the amount of nuclear waste he did? Because I don't think you realize, for those that don't play Satisfactory, it's insane. It's lethal. I see something that's missing, and I think this has a chance to be a real showpiece. Once again, I'll be back in a hot minute. Well, that's looking just swell. Oh, my f flipping spoons. Okay, now tell me if he had regrets doing this. He had to have questioned himself at some point going, Oh, I, I wish I didn't do this, because now I can't do this. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can just see how illuminescent they are. You can see every line. Like if someone was to say, where's the aluminium in this? Where's the ingots in this? Where's the rods? 
You'll have to stir for a good five seconds before you see it. No, where's the nuclear waste? Oh, it's right there. Oh, and over there. And down here. <laughs> Oh yeah, feels good. This is looking great. So one might look at this and get the impression that I covered the entirety of my base in nuclear waste. And you'd be right. Up to and definitely including... Jesus. Now the waffle has got syrup on it. The Weave, which if I do say so myself has never looked better. It's kind of like this is a waste disposal site, except above ground, and advertising its presence. Oh my god, the radiation is so bad. If I die and I have to respawn in, I just die instantly. I've made the base so hostile I can't even be here anymore. Do you remember what I was saying, how lethal it is? If you're not careful with it. More. And also, the spaghetti of my base is just completely out of control now. But damn, that nuclear waste looks so vibrant in the moonlight. So I feel like this is how this base was gonna end up. Nuclear waste everywhere. Power plants, as far as the eyes can see. Our conveyor NATO that turned into a conveyor cocoon now has a warhead aiming up to the heavens. And thank god I can use these bounce pads to just bask in it all while I fly off. Oh, and thank my lucky stars, the frame rate's gotten kinda bad again. I'd like to thank NordVPN again for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, if you head on over to NordVPN, vpn.com slash game it out you can get 70 percent off their three-year plans and don't forget to put in game it out at checkout as well to get another month free so and if you haven't already and you've done this watch this video now and you've not done with nordvpn go over and support josh with nordvpn i'm gonna do it straight after this so go over there show him some support and Give him that bag. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you had fun. I know I did. I'm going to go check and see if I'm growing a third arm from all this radiation. And I'll see you next time. You're definitely going to grow a third arm. Uh, <laughs> hey <there. laughs> I had to pull that in there. Oh, my God. Guys, that was absolutely crazy. He's going to have so many problems with that. He's going to have so many problems with that. And only you guys that play Satisfactory and have got to nuclear stage know how much of a pain it's going to be and all that kind of stuff. So, guys... Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know for a fact you're gonna let me know. You're gonna wanna. You're gonna wanna see more. Yeah, guys, have a fantastic day. Keep smiling. Go and show Josh some loves. Go and check his out. His links in the description, and uh, just keep smiling, man. And I'll see you in another video.